Well, welcome back everyone to our daily devotions. We're continuing our journey through the book of Revelation. You know, one of the great blessings of our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ is something we declare almost weekly, and that is, is that this isn't all there is. Uh, we have heaven to look forward to. We have God's plan, his promise of a world like no other for you and I to enjoy. Now, before all of those promises come to pass, uh, we read about a 1,000-year reign of Christ. That will be like no other. In fact, in the morning devotion uh, that you get, uh, that has uh, some of which we're talking about here right now, um, I wrote this that I wanted to share with you at right at the top about envisioning this kingdom to come. And I want to read it to you. Picture a world governed by goodness and righteousness, where integrity and truth are the standards of rule and law. Imagine a life where education, commerce, and domestic affairs operate in a manner that reflects both nobility and authenticity. Envision a place where people live for hundreds of years because good health prevails, the curse of sin is defeated, and harmony between people is protected. Think of a place where peace and justice flow uninterrupted and untouched by the corruption or hypocrisy of mankind. While this place may seem like a fairy tale, rest assured it is real. And the day is coming when God's people will enjoy blessings of this promise day after day because this place is a paradise known as the millennial kingdom. I can't wait for that day. I can't wait to enjoy it. And I'm so interested to hear what God has to say about it. In Revelation chapter 20, verses four through six, uh, we read about some of the aspects of this great kingdom to come. Uh, we read about who will reign in that kingdom. Uh, we reign about some of uh, the characteristics of this millennial kingdom to come. And I pray that it would be an encouragement to you. You know, I've read Revelation 20 before, um, but I have to tell you, going through it right now, on the heels of what we've been through the last, really, uh, six months um, has been an encouragement to, to me personally because I'm reminded once again um, that no matter how good we try to make this life, uh, no matter uh, what party you support politically, no, no matter how you and I try to massage things to, to give us some level of comfort in this world, it will never be perfect. But there is a time that's coming uh, that will be like no other, a time of great blessing. And what a joy we have in our faith as Christians. You know, being a believer in Jesus Christ, is, is, if, you're just, if it's just about rules to you, then you're really missing out. Uh, we have a hope beyond all of the chaos, all of the corruption, all of the carnage that happens all around us, even our own death. I mean, this is beautiful. And this is something that you and I will 100% be a part of. This is part of our inheritance. You know, if I was a lawyer right now and we sat down and I said, well, at a certain age, you're gonna have access to this. And it was a glorious estate with cars and planes and boats and mansion with rooms. And you, you would be like, can I fast forward the clock? My friends, there is a day coming uh, when there will be an inheritance that you will enjoy, uh, that you won't be able to do anything but praise God because you'll be so happy that you are a part of it. So without any further ado, let me read to you these verses here. Um, and this chapter is so magnanimous that we got to break it down in portions. Revelation 20 verses four to six says, then John says, then I saw. And as we've said throughout the book of Revelation, that phrase, then I saw, represents a, a, a transition in vision. And so then I saw the angel coming down to behind Satan. We saw that in the beginning of this chapter. Now we transition here. Then I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God, who had not worshiped the beast or his image, who had not accepted the mark on their foreheads, notice, or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And I'm gonna read this through and we'll break it down, don't worry. 
The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6, blessed and holy. This is one of seven beatitudes in the book of Revelation. Seven, the perfect number. We know we have seven different, we have three different sets of seven judgments. Here's one of the seven beatitudes. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years years. Amen. I feel like I need to say that. I I agree with this. I can't wait for this. Let's break this down. I wanted to read it and then break it down. Uh, Who's who's joining Christ in the resurrection? Who is sitting on these thrones and administrating judges, judges and authority? What's going on here? Well, what we must realize is, and it's something we alluded to in yesterday's devotion, you're going to have tribulation people who survive remarkably, by the way, all of the catastrophes, the unprecedented calamities that come upon the earth during the tribulation. Somehow they, you know, these are the type of people that would win like one of those, you know, survivor competitions that they have on uh, TV. Okay. They're going to somehow survive remarkably. So because you're going to have a shortage of food, air pollution, water pollution, Obviously, the devil opposing any believers in Jesus Christ. So these people truly um, have a maverick, uh, you know, personality just in general to survival of this. But I truly believe the spirit of God has preserved them because they're going to be needed to procreate the earth uh, in the thousand year millennium. Now, as these believers procreate, they will give birth to children. Again, a thousand years is a long time. We'll have incredible health in this thousand years. And so people will not be dying and these children will grow up, and many of them will grow up not to be believers in Jesus Christ. And so because of the sin nature, we can can blame everybody, including the devil, for why we do things, but it's our sin nature because the procreation of people will also pass on the sin nature. And as these sinners are born, those who don't come to follow Christ will look to deviate from the plan of God, and so there will need to be a need for there to be people who administrate justice. Now, we're not going to need necessarily um, like a police force, so to speak, but we will have a righteous system where there will be no corruption in laws, there will be no corruption in judges, that we will effectively be able to administrate justice. And I firmly believe that if you are faithful in your life with Christ here now, you will have some type of position in helping God administrate his kingdom in some way. Now, exactly what that is, um, we don't want to waste time on speculation and, and opinions. But what we do know is that we are called to be faithful now for a reason. And that reason has a lot to do with how we will serve God in the millennial kingdom. So there will be a need uh, to administrate justice and peace. And it will not be interrupted because Christ is king. Uh, There will be no injustice that will be tolerated. Now, how exactly God will deal and help change people that are bent a certain way, that again is not alluded to. And so it would would really be you and I stepping out of the margins of, of this theological understanding of the millennial kingdom to try to piece that together. But what we do know is that God will reign with perfect justice through his son, Jesus Christ, with most likely David as the vice chair of all of this. Now, it goes on to say that he saw the souls of those who were beheaded, those who wouldn't take the mark of the beast on their forehead of their hand, those who rejected the worship of the Antichrist, in other words. Uh, These believers, um, I believe, literally had their head cut off. Um, I believe some maybe didn't have their head cut off, but they were executed because having your head cut off also is a reference uh, in Greek uh, literature um, to being executed. And so whether, they, whether they, they were literally executed, which I do believe uh, by their heads being cut off, or if there were others who were killed another way by the sword or by bullet or however being hung, nevertheless, uh, those who were martyred for Christ, all of them, whether beheaded or not, um, they will reign with Christ. They were faithful unto the point of death, uh, incredibly so. And it speaks of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they will be rewarded this way and says they will come to life. Uh, I I think 
you and I, um, as believers, because we will not be in the tribulation, as we said, I believe you and I are just going to be in awe when we see some of these things, when we meet some of these brothers and sisters in Christ, um, the fellowship, the love that we're going to have for them, that the appreciation we're going to have for other people in the faith who have died for the cause of Christ, that we will now be mindful of um, in the millennial kingdom. There will be a fellowship um, like no other point in history because of the joy that we will feel for each other, um, the admiration that we will have for the Lord Jesus Christ, but also for each other, um, for standing for the glory of Christ, especially for believers who have been martyred. Um, and it says that they came to life. Now it says the rest did not come to life yet. Now, well, who's that talking about? First resurrection. Is a second resurrection? Well, yes. And we get a clue as to what John is speaking about here. It says the first resurrection, blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Well, who's that? Those are believers in Jesus Christ. Well, who's the second resurrection? Those are the people who did not believe in Jesus Christ. They will be resurrected to stand judgment at the great white throne judgment, and their faith has already been sealed. And that is why, as you walk this earth now, I was just reminded about this earlier today, less talking about frivolous things and more focus on the cross because people need to know Jesus. The only reason why this hasn't happened yet, Peter tells us, is because God is not willing for any to perish. And guess who shouldn't be on that either? You and I. We should be sharing our faith by how we live and trusting in the Spirit to give us promptings to share our faith verbally as the Spirit leads. We need to be about the mission of Christ. We have been called to continue the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we are to be focused on doing because we don't want anybody at this white throne judgment that we know because there will be people there. So let us, let us do our best to share Christ while we draw breath now on this earth uh, because we don't want to have anybody under our roof connected to us that are at the white throne judgment. That's the second resurrection that he's speaking about. Now, the second death, he says, has no power over them. You might be saying, I thought you said nobody dies in uh, the millennial kingdom. Well, there are two deaths that you need to know about. There's physical death. And that is what these believers in the tribulation who were beheaded experienced. They were killed for their faith. That was physical death. But spiritual death has no mastery over them because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there will be uninterrupted peace, municipally speaking, in this kingdom, but also spiritually speaking, because there will be no separation from God ever again. You know, some of you watching this, you've gone through dark times in your life right now. Uh, maybe you're going through that right now, maybe in the past, and you felt separated from God. Let me tell you one of the greatest joys of the millennial kingdom. Yes, justice. Yes, good health. Yes, peace. 100%. Here it is right here. Don't miss this. You will never feel lonely again. You will never feel distance from God again. You will never feel that uneasiness, that really that, that unnerving feeling of where is God in all of this? And, and does God still love me? Whatever doubt you go through, you'll never have that again. That You're going to leave that here, okay? Um, and in the millennial kingdom, you will never experience even a shred of separation from God. The present, the fullness of the presence of God will truly categorize this new millennial kingdom. And that is why believers uh, will enjoy uh, this new uh, promised 1,000 year reign of Christ because the presence of God in its fullness will captivate our minds and our hearts. We still have free will, uh, but those who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, who are born again in the Spirit, will have a heart of praise like no other time in their life prior to their death. And you could only imagine the worship that will break out. Now, who else will reign in this time, specifically speaking? Well, based on Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, we know that Old Testament believers will reign with Christ. Important to realize that. We have a clear understanding that David will play a critical role in the hierarchy of leading in this kingdom. 
Uh, when you look back at the Davidic king, uh, covenant that was made and you look back at numerous prophecies concerning the Messiah, that is evident and clear. Also, Matthew 19, 28 makes clear that the apostles, and minus Judas, will reign with Christ. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 uh, gives us the understanding that believers, faithful believers, will reign with Christ. And then Revelation 6, 9 adds to that those believers in the tribulation, both who are martyred and those who survive, will reign with Christ. And there will be so much to do in his kingdom. Um, a lot of it will have to do with obviously uh, ushering in this thousand year reign of peace. Um, but I encourage you all the more to be people um, who are living for the glory of God now, to be living for uh, the promises to come now, because that will determine your positioning in the new kingdom. Again, it would only be speculation to say where and that, but right now what we need, to, our job is to focus on being faithful. People all the time say, Ray, what do, what do I need to focus on in my life? What is God's will? And here it is, be faithful. Look at your life right now. Be faithful if you're in your marriage. Be faithful as a father, as a grandfather, as an aunt, as an uncle, as a grandmother, as a wife. Uh, be faithful on your job. Be faithful to your friends. Be faithful to your church. I was talking with somebody the other day. They're like, oh yeah, I go here, I go there, I go here. Now that's fine if you want to do that. That's up to you. But that's not God's will. God actually says in Hebrews 10, you know that great commandment about don't forsake the assembly believers? Guess what it's attached to? The second coming. It's all about the, the tribulation, the second coming, the millennium. As the day draws near, don't forsake the assembly of believers. You know, uh, you're going to hear me say this, um, but I'm gonna, I have to say it just to encourage people. I can't tell you how many texts I got from people to open up the church. Open up the church during the pandemic. Now, nobody wanted to be a church more than me. I missed it terribly. But obviously, we were obeying laws and policies, and we're trying to do our best for safety. And obviously, there's so much information coming out. Is it a conspiracy? Is it not? Listen, the virus is real, whether it is chemical, biological warfare, or it's a regular virus. I think the verdict's still out on all of that. But this much we do know, we want to be wise and safe. But I noticed that some of those same people that were urging me to do this and to do that, um, they haven't really been at church regularly. And um, now, Obviously, some people have a reason because they have underlining conditions, and uh, we have somebody in our family like that. Please, take precaution. But we need to realize that reading all of this information should motivate us to be more committed to God, more faithful to God. And actually, that is one of the chief commandments about being in fellowship is that as all of this draws closer, be more faithful. Be more faithful to God, not less. Oh, I can't believe all that's going on. Get more committed to God. Become more devoted in your faith. Because there's a time that's coming when uninterrupted peace and justice will flow. And I'm so thankful that tribulation believers, um, believers from the Old Testament, the apostles, you and I, will join in and reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so... The reward that I was alluding to earlier uh, when we were going through this uh, beginnings of the chapter in verses four through six of Revelation 20 is once again, is a reminder for you and I to be diligent to serve the Lord now. No task you do here at your church, for your family, for other people, any act in Christ that you do has eternal ramifications. What we do here reverberates in heaven. So let's get our attitudes and our actions aligned and in agreement with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a time of uninterrupted peace and justice that is coming. Let us be preparing for that by being people who are serving the Lord, being people like Joshua who say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, I'm looking forward to this day and enjoying this kingdom. In fact, I want to make that abundantly clear to God by living a life now of humble expectation. And I invite you to do the same. 
I know it's hard. I know we have to deal with temptation and trials and our own tribulations. But a day is coming when we will enjoy the thousand-year reign of Christ. Glory be to God for this promise. And may God give us the grace and strength to push through, as Paul said, to run the race with endurance, to be poured out like a drink offering, because we truly believe this verse, and we'll close on this thought from Philippians 1, 21, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Here's the gain right here. We can't wait to walk in the fullness of this promise. May God bless you. We'll see you next time.